This is Radio 44 on 91.6 FM. In Nairobi now, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We all know that. And that's why the morning fix is all decked up in pink. Mm -hmm. And we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Asna Patel. And she'll be telling us all about her journey with breast cancer. Good morning, Asna. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. No well, worries. It's our pleasure. Yes. But let's get into it. Uh, yeah. Tell us about how the journey started. When did you get uh, diagnosed first? Um, I got diagnosed in 2016. I was a normal working mum. I ignored a lot of the first initial symptoms that I had and then finally went to a gyno, and a gyno at MP Shah did diagnose me with the first start with stage zero of the cancer. But it, it took me a long time to actually accept that that could have been what I was going through. Like anybody else, we sit and we think, no, it can't be, can't me. be me. I yeah. can't get mm. breast cancer. It shouldn't be that. So I think ignoring the first initial symptoms, I should have paid more attention to that. So, so what, was, what, are the what was those symptoms? Okay, so it was a very heavy and laggy arm. Um, the underarm really throbbing and having a lot of um, pain and swelling. There were leakages from the breast previously on the monthly cycles. Okay. Um, Self-examination I never used to do, uh, which is so important. I would say like in the shower or for men and women, or if you, especially for men if you have a history of breast cancer in the family, it's good to keep checking um, on changes. But like, like I said again, it's just something I never ever thought of really paying attention to until I had to go through those um, tests and got diagnosed. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, you could have probably been doing the self-examination yes. and known earlier. Yeah. So that's already a message so early in the Correct. interview. Yeah. Uh, you can find resources on how to conduct the, the self-examination. We'll post it actually on our social media. Um, so look forward to that. It's, it's fairly simple once yes. you get the hang of it. Um, so tell us, once you got diagnosed, you started the treatment. Um, so you did chemotherapy, right? Yes, I did. So what was that journey like? What was the high points, the low points, the struggle when it came to going through such a harsh treatment? So the the good the, the good of the part the good part of the treatment or getting to know that I needed treatment was that I just caught it early. That okay. that was the main thing. That was the first thing that ran through my mind when I was told that I needed chemotherapy. It's daunting to hear that you have cancer first, True. and then you have the, you have to go through treatment at such a young age. I've got Sorry, how old were you at the time? 34. I see. 34 okay. with two boys, mm -hmm. um, age three and six then. Oh. So, you know, because there's not much knowledge and not many people talk about cancer, you, you start thinking that it's, it's, such a, it's such a thing that you could actually either lose your life or it's a death sentence. It's nothing like that. You've just got to... When I first got told that chemo was coming, like I said, it was such early stages, I felt like, okay, at least I caught it. Mm -hmm. I was privileged enough to fly off to the UK and get my treatment there, not like many people have that opportunity. And then the bad was, it does kill you emotionally and physically, even the worst point of it, because the chemo pretty much gives you one week of a good cycle and then three weeks, you're completely down. So yeah. mindset wise, you have to really pull through that struggle of thinking that you have no other option but to fight for this and you have to think of the end goal to fight for it. That's, but yeah. So for someone who's not experienced chemo, yes. what is that drain like? Is there any way you can explain it to someone else? Not really, not really. but mm -hmm. I remember when we used to go, there were a few of us that used to have sessions together in the UK. We used to call the first drug the Red Devil because it was really <laughs> red in colour. And then I, th I think for weeks you would secrete that red through. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, pretty oh. much. But what it does, it, it just pretty much, it, it somewhat gets rid of your physical ability. Like you're just feeling really nauseous all the time. Uh -huh. You're constantly feeling like you can't do much. Your fing there are certain treatments that also make your fingers and feet very numb and I tingly. See. So there's different stages of the chemotherapy that have different side effects. 
Yeah. Okay, very, very, very interesting. Yeah. It's nice to hear from someone who's gone, gone through, through it. it exactly. If you have any similar experiences, if you want to send out a message, 0758 123 444. Good morning. Now, in studio, we're joined with by Asna Patel. Uh, she's telling us all about her journey with breast cancer. And yes. um, let's get into some more juicy questions. Yeah. I mean, you know, you mentioned about how it affects you physically, yes. emotionally. So take us through that. How was your mental health, especially during the time of chemo? You said you traveled to London, yes. um, staying away from family. How did that affect you? So admittedly, um, to start off with, I felt like physically, like we men I mentioned that every part of the body switched off. But like in any situation that you're in, be it negative, um, be it in a domestic case or be it in any other medical condition, um, physical might be taken away from you. But mentally, if you have a powerful, positive mindset. So for me, I always being away, it was very hard for me to be away from the kids, my husband. Um, and, you know, it was more like not having that will to fight that journey anymore or go through my next chemo. Yeah. So um, I think keeping a positive mindset, knowing that you have something to work towards, having that end goal. So I would have to do a lot of meditation, obviously here and back in, Ken in the UK, you have a lot of um, chances where you can get your in, in, in cancer centers like Faraja here, for mm -hmm. example, I won't talk about the UK. But in, in Kenya, at least, you can get meditation you, for free. You can get counseling. Counseling is also a very big part because right. you're talking about it with someone who maybe understands or who or group sessions where you're with other people. So mindset, yes, I would say um, um, it, it's, it's the key thing to keep yourself getting through anything that you're going through in life, not only breast cancer. So just being positive. Just being positive. Yeah, just seeing that end light. Yeah. Right. It, it does sound like your whole life had to come to a standstill for yeah. those few months because you physically you know going through so much and mentally now you have to go for counseling, you have to go for XYZ. Yes. So I, I I mean, it's, I didn't realize tough. that your life comes to a standstill. And uh, the, the, the part here is you are suffering with it. Yeah. But so is your family. family. Yes. You know, because Absolutely. even if they don't have it, yes. th they are there with you in it. And as watching much as you, you go through exactly. what you have to go through. How was that for your kids? Because you mentioned they were three and six. Yes. How, so you went off to get the treatment. You probably came back looking very different. I did. Um, how? What was that shock like for them? How did you explain it to the kids? So the good thing was my husband and I have always been very communicative with the kids. So even when I went for treatment, for example, when I had my first shave off my hair, so basically after 12 to 14 days after your first cycle, you lose your hair and um, you have to really go actually go and shave it off. Now mm -hmm. that's the most daunting part for any cancer patient yeah. to lose that identity. So, but it's the way you also again mindfully mindset wise go into that phase so when i did shave my hair off my husband had already taken the kids and he's he's bald anyway by choice mm -hmm. um but what he did was he got all like both the kids go and shave their hair off as oh, well wow. Wow. so we when i facetimed them from my first shave off i remember my three-year-old telling me mommy put your hair back on put your hair back on do magic do magic because he was very in i used to have very long hair before mm -hmm. um so i think that was a bit of a shock to him and he didn't recognize me at first so yes i had my very low moments of when i um lost that piece of identity but i think it was from that day on I, I really honestly dressed up, went for the shave, came back and they were here. So it was a lot easier. So going back to your question about how did they handle it? I chose to have most of my treatment in the UK just for them not to see me struggle. That wow. Way. So uh, that was my choice, to be honest. But coming wow. back, I needed to come back for them because mm. they were the only ones who were going to get me through to the last few cycles of that treatment. Um, so there goes again of family support yeah. but when I did shave the hair off I told myself and I promised myself from that day on that I was never going to ever have life or look at life any different than it just being a blessing of every wow. day. Yeah. Gosh, wow, what a story, especially yeah. like yeah. going going away so your kids don't see it. That's like yes. a mother's love. Yes, I'd exactly. rather be alone than, than, than you see it. it. Yeah. So in those moments where, you know, you looked at yourself and you don't have your hair as an identity, what was that thing that kept you going? Um, 
that hair grows back that <laughs> we really our our looks don't make us yes. um yeah. i had to have a really real realization point where it hit me and thought you'd rather fight for your health um get back because the kids need you you're their mom um so there were like i said there were moments where i couldn't even maybe stand up and do much or i always that always drove me to getting to get past that past stage that, yeah. yeah so so yeah. basically you kept seeing the light at the yes, end of the tunnel absolutely. constantly i always say that yeah. i keep saying that yeah light at the end of a tunnel that that's amazing for you to go through such an experience and yes. still see that light if you have any comments if you just want to send a message to us now 0758123444 it is breast cancer awareness month we know that pink october and we've got asna patel in studio she's telling us all about her journey um with breast cancer yes uh, mm-hmm. we we did speak about the mental health yes. um of course the physical as well uh, but are there myths or you know some stigmas around breast cancer uh that you have heard or people have been mentioning and this is just completely myths and not facts um endless i think <laughs> i heard so many in my journey um the ones i've come across that were very mo- are very common um are is it um a genetic hmm. thing is it a um is it has it got to do with is it in your family so yes um a lot of people base breast cancer on that um but mine was typically not hormonal um i was triple negative receptive um i haven't had any um hormonal treatments for s- after that so i and i i i most importantly in the uk they gave me the braca 1 and braca 2 test done and that turned out negative but it does it does always cross the mind if it was genetic because my maternal aunt had breast cancer my uncle has colon cancer my sister had similar um but very early stages in the uterus so um it could be that maybe as i was explaining that 40 plus they do inten- more intensive tests mm-hmm. it could be turning out genetic but it doesn't always have to be that is online as well one of the biggest myths right uh, another one i came across a stigma uh, or a, a stigma actually was oh is breast cancer contagious um so i've had i've had the most um funny uh, or the most ridiculous questions asked wow. and i i put that down to it also being um society stigma yeah uh we come from a society and i wouldn't only say asians i'm not going to only pinpoint on us i would pinpoint on um uh, african uh, um, caucasian uh i think a lot of it is oh, don't talk about the c word don't say you have cancer don't do this don't do that but what it really needs is we need to change that uh, opinion and that f- um mindset of talking about it having people know more about it like for me being a cancer survivor Uh, I just pray and hope one person gets the message out there that I'm sitting here today. I'm yeah. I'm living a normal life. I'm able to give my family everything, give myself everything. So it's not it's not a death sentence. It's right. nothing that has to be looked at as a, a taboo of oh my god, you have cancer. Let's not go close to her. Maybe this. So you know that 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 perception has to change, especially for the next generation. Yeah. yeah. Yes, cancer is not in any way contagious. Yeah. You won't get it from sitting no. next to no. someone. No. Yeah. And it's shocking because we we're, we're such educated people yes. now and still you're getting that kind of a question absolutely. asked absolutely absolutely so for for the next generation like my children as well come play a big part into this i have to educate my son i have to tell him a lot about um what it what it's all about why mommy did what she did or so yeah. so let's get into that yes. how you're talking to your children about it are yes. you how are you approaching it are you prepping them with the reality that this is what i went through Mm-hmm. I might have to go through it again. Mm-hmm. Someone in your life might have to go through it. How does that conversation go? So, recently I lost my mom in January to stage 4 cancer, which I'll talk about that again. Um so my eldest son's been very a lot more receptive towards breast cancer being in the family or I mean me having it, my mom having a different st- sort of cancer. So, um he's my younger one like I said when I left he was 3. So it was very much like mommy left me and went away. Mm. Um but my elder one being 6, he was like mommy where have you gone and we we it's about communicating with them first of all. Um the things i have said okay at first when i first got it he was like mommy my stomach hurts does that mean i have cancer mommy oh, my no. foot hurts so it's it's a way you talk to them uh how i did talk to my elder one uh i did say his name's aryan and i said aryan 
um, it doesn't mean that when you're sick but change your life may have a healthy lifestyle now um, like again another myth could be like too much sugar or it's your lifestyle or I, I, I get asked all the time how did you get breast cancer I can't pinpoint I on know. one thing yeah. I don't know yeah. But there are certain things that obviously scientifically have been researched. So I would point, I would say that to him. But I did end up saying to him that because my sort of cancer, if it comes back, I've been told it could come back aggressive. Um, there have been cases of a lot of people around me that I've lost have become aggressive and they've lost the, their battle to cancer. So I did tell him the one thing I think for kids to really importantly know is why you fought the journey is obviously because of them. And secondly, I told him if mommy can't fight it the next time, just know I fought it the first time. So I think communication is so important, but to keep it at a at at, at a, um, a tune or a or on a note that they understand with anything, like it could be anything they're dealing with. But this in particular was hard for me because seeing a six-year-old trying to understand that mom might not be able to win the fight the next time, it's it it's daunting. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm glad you've talked to them. I know someone who's been through breast cancer and okay. the adult children still don't know. Yes. Um, now that's again taboo yeah. society. Y- yeah. Not don't say the C word. Don't say the C word. The, the thing is the children are now adults in their 20s yeah. able to comprehend it completely if your 10 year old can as yeah. well. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's sad that we've got to keep it under wraps. Absolutely. So, you know, you've gone back to family in, in this discussion yes. a lot. How can a family support someone who's going through cancer? How were you supported and how did you support your mum when she was also battling the same? So support in this sort of journey is everything, absolutely. Um, But unfortunately, I've been on both ends of it. I've been a patient who's actually had caregivers like my husband, my family, um, trying to take care of me. And then I've been a caregiver myself. So I mentioned my mum passed away on 29th of Jan. She was diagnosed two years ago. So um, I could only feel, but if I hadn't gone through that journey myself, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to give her that support like how I got. So support is everything because you're able to know that it's what, what you're fighting for is worth it because that's them you're fighting for. And with my mom, she, uh, she fought very gracefully for the last two years. But closer to the end, I think she all she needed to know that we understood what was happening with her. We understood that we needed to give her her space as well. She she fought very um, dignified, like I said. She she always made her cancer not a big um, taboo. She spoke about it as well. In fact, I took my mom to a lot of conferences uh, for her to talk about her journey. And I think by talking about it, you heal. Yeah. You actually get... Um, um, you heal from your own story so support I think in, it comes in various ways um, not being there mentally for the person physically for the person and just being um, uh, understanding what they're going through is the most important yeah. great insight yep. that you need to be there but you also need to give space, space. Yeah, um, yes. maybe just to wrap this up what is your message to those who are currently going through treatment or their families um First thing I've always said is don't give up hope. Cancer is not a death sentence. It's, um, you need to always, um, I I think, shout out to all the patients who have been just diagnosed, who are going through treatment, who are in remission. Um, I'm currently also doing, like, I'm I'm trying to, I, I work around a lot with cancer patients, so I'm trying to counsel them. So the only thing I see through them is that giving up hope is it shouldn't be an option True. Um, because fear will always present itself fate and family will always have a part to play in it but it's only you that can fight through this so you need to get um, you need to get the courage to uh, accept your journey first and then have that hope that you will get through it um, yeah so I think perfect I think I think that's hope. yeah yeah but I think that's yeah. a perfect way to wrap it up <laughs> yes. um, and the way you mentioned seeing the light at the end of the tunnel yes. I think that's Thank something you. that you need to keep yeah. in your mind I do I did want to say that anyone listening um, if there's any treatments I've, I run a spa and it's aura.spa 
I'm the founder of it. And the reason why I got this uh, spa running up was to help also cancer patients with treatments that could help them through their treatments. Absolutely. Yes. Super. Make you feel Thank a little bit better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give you look good, feel good. <laughs> yes, it's a part yeah. of the process. Well, we want to say a huge thank you. Well, thank um, you. As you said, people don't like talking about the C word. Here we are. It's Here not even the C word. Cancer. Cancer. Yeah. It yeah. is yes. cancer. cancer. <laughs> yes. And it is normal to have Yes. Because we all have the cells, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. It's been an amazing interview. Thank you, guys. And um, we wish you the best yeah. on uh, on the rest of your journey. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. If Thank you have you. any last comments, 0758 123